Last time on Disorderly Product News, lawyer shows up to court drunk while his client faces life in prison. I don't want to mislead the court. I did call Mr. So somebody hit you. That was a hit and run. You didn't call the police, and none of the other two people have. Hey, you know, Mr. Caramango, you told me she was your ex-girlfriend. And so now I'm very upset with you. I have nothing but the utmost respect for your honor. But there was clearly something wrong with him. I noticed he was slurring his speech. Very upsetting his speech as he walked by and actually ran into our counsel table. Daily driver. I, I had a client named Christopher Ponto. My best friend is a, is a gentleman named. Um, he's incarcerated in, state, in the state penitentiary. I represented him. He had a car lease. I assume the lease. From so that's where we left off last time, guys. Attorney Joseph Caramingo getting into the fact that uh, he is not the owner of the car. In fact, the owner of the car is locked up in the Nevada uh, Department of Corrections. Why he felt the need to say that, uh, how he thought that was going to help him, I don't know. But then we went to uh, Judge Levitt's career, and she's had quite a career. This is uh, prolific thief Damien Dinky Monroe. He put out a contract while in the Clark County Department of Corrections, or the Clark County Jail, uh, on um, Judge Levitt, on the prosecutor, and on uh, the te detective in his case. He got life in prison from Judge Levitt. The detective in his case, the one he put a hit out on, Bradley Nickel, wrote a book, Repeat Offender, on Dinky Monroe's life. It was also made into a movie. Here's what he had to say. This was a case of a lifetime. Most detectives will never see a case like this. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Lockup for Evidence could not hold all of Dinky Monroe's stolen items, so they had to rent four storage units. It said the items were worth between two and seven million. Judge Levitt made headlines again when she presided over the murder trial of Basil Dylan Morgan, a man who was previously, just months before, allowed to cover up his racist tattoos on his face with makeup. But this time he was in front of Judge Levitt for the murder of a 75-year-old woman. He ultimately pleaded guilty and then filed motions to rescind that plea. Judge Levitt ultimately ruled, no makeup, no motions. Let's get back to Mr. Caramingo and just wait because Mr. Kiraminko has another scandal in another courtroom, and this one has ties to the Dapper Don, John Gotti. So we're going to find out how this ends with Judge Levitt and Kiraminko, and then finally we will find out the most shocking thing, the scandal that happened in Judge Levitt's career. You might not believe it, but let's get back to Mr. Kiraminko. Who, who, who did you appear in front of? Your Honor, the that case was originally in front of... It was in front of Judge Wallingham. T-O-N-T-O? T-O-N-T-O. And Mr. Ponto had leased the car for his girlfriend, who was the complaining witness in the case. Uh, he received a 12 to... 12 to 32, or 12 to 40. I assumed the lease on Mr. Ponto's car. I've been making the payments, I have the insurance in my name, and that's my, that's my daily driver. So the, the car was hit from behind. There's minimal damage in the back. There's substantial damage in the front. And it's it's it as it. You the judge, can, I I, I have nothing but respect and honor for your honor. And and your honor treated me fairly since the inception of this case. You've given me a fair trial this far. Well, it's not you. I'm worried about. It's Mr. Jacatuna. Your honor, my my. My concerns are for my client as well. And you know what? If I were you, my only interest would be in clearing my name. So clear your name. I see, sir. Judge, so I'm presumed innocent. Why should I have to clear my name? Am I charged with a crime? Absolutely not. I have no desire to charge you with a crime. I hope you understand this. My only desire will be to help you. If you, if there's a problem, my only desire will be to help you and to protect. I don't, the only people I, I care about right court, now I can tell is you. you. I don't have a problem. The only person I care about is you and Mr. Jacatunas right now. That's all I care about. I respect that, Your Honor. Okay. And I'm willing to go forward. You can then blow. I see. Judge, this is, this is an intoxicator. 
I mean, it's a PBT. I used it routinely in Unicorn. I know exactly what. In fact, this is my old Marshall. I, I respect this. Thing. He used to do it for me all the time. Just take a deep breath. Just blow on it. Did you get a, get a good enough blow? Okay. Well, you know you you know you got to blow good. I, really I know, know you know you have to blow good. I mean, I'm... Because I, I know you represented... I've never done it before, Judge. I know, but you've probably represented people that have been arrested for yeah, DUI. And you got to blow good. I'm confident you know that. We don't have to do it again. We don't? You want to show me? You got a good enough read? Okay. 1052, Your Honor. It's residual from last night. I am stone sober. Mr. Caramingo, if I was you, I would just be quiet at I'm this sorry, point. Your Honor. Okay. No, is it done? No. So quiet. Okay, for the record, your blood alcohol is a point oh seven five. And, um, Raul, will you state your name for the record? Raul and, and you were ordered to come up here by myself, is that correct? That's correct. And you used to do these tests for me routinely in Unicord? Yes. And this is the same machine that we used to use in Unicord? It is the same unit we use. And will you um, state for the record the machine that you used? Uh, it is a TBT Alco Sensor 3, and Toxometer. And you've been properly trained in how to perform that test? Yes. Okay. And you properly followed all the procedures that you've been trained to do. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Thank you very much for coming up here at my request. Okay. If the record will, and you, do you want to see it, Mr. Caramango? Well, may I? Do you want to, did you clear no, it? No, no, no. I, I know this gentleman, and he's a okay. and I believe what he says. And Judge, I guess. See, that's not so brave the judge. Well, that, that may have been a noble statement, Your Honor. I admit that I did have drinks last night, and I lost my grandmother about two weeks ago, and I've been, I've been under a lot of pressure. I wanted the best for my client, and it was a mistake to drink last night, and I apologize, Your Honor, and I just, I don't know what else to say. I, I just I just know that I can try this case. You were here at 11.15 a.m., is that correct? Can April, can you state for the record when he appeared? Because we didn't finish with our criminal calendar until about 11. Yeah, it was approximately 11, 15, 11, 20 this morning. Okay. So 11, 15, 11, 20, Mr. Caramingo appeared. It is now by the court's clock, 1, 46 p.m., almost one and a half hour later, and you're at point oh seven five. According to, according to the intoxicant you run. Right. So, so, um, uh, I, well, think I, you, extrapolate. I think that you probably had more to drink than you were. I mean, I was hoping it was going to say zero. So at this point, I mean, I can't. I was going to say point oh one, And I apologize. No disrespect to the court. And I just apologize, Your Honor. I, I just... Uh, I hope you didn't have. I hope you weren't involved. I was in Your Honor, I said that I did. I did the shots of the kill last night, Your Honor. I was in my office till four in the morning last night, and I did drink when I got home. I was stressed. I lost my grandmother a month ago. I lost my brother in '99. You said two weeks ago. Now you said a month. Okay. I I kind of think you should. June, June second was when my grandmother died. I think you should stop because it just keeps getting worse. Yes, I so I mean. I cannot let an attorney proceed um, under these types of conditions. I don't think you have a concussion. 
And I sure hope there's no reports of hits and hit and run. I hope you weren't involved in a hit and run. I, I was not, Your Honor. I, I did hope speak, not. I did speak with the gentleman who, uh, who hit me, and he took off. He was a Mexican gentleman in a And I did, I did not exchange information with him because he was satisfied to leave. His damage was minimal. The guy that you hit was satisfied to leave. Well, I now know why you didn't call 911. Your Honor, I, philosophically, I've never called 911 in my life. As you were intoxicated and you were worried about being I, arrested. Your Honor, I was not intoxicated. So, um, and again, my only desire at this point is to protect... I don't know, I've never had an attorney. Maybe the state can enlighten me. My only desire at this point is to protect... Mr. Jacatunas, I cannot absolutely allow an attorney to proceed. I don't think you have a concussion. I don't think you hit your head. I don't think you have a concussion. I think you're dazed and confused and can't tell a straight story because you're too intoxicated. And that's okay. You know what? I respectfully I respectfully okay. disagree, Ryan. Okay. And I don't know you that well, and maybe you have a problem, and, and so my only desire is to see you, that maybe you can get some help. I appreciate that, Your Honor, but I, I can represent the court that I do not have a problem. I've been under a lot of stress. Okay. It was my mistake to drink last night, and I, I regret it. And I can tell, I can represent the court that I was not intoxicated at any point in time, legally. Ooh, unless you drank sometime while you were here in the courthouse. Go, no, Mr. Honor. I know you didn't because you were pretty much either in my side or my bailiff. Ultimately, Judge Michelle Levitt uh, declared a mistrial after uh, Mr. Karaminko failed the breathalyzer. I think she was put in a no-win situation. She was put in a corner because if the outcome of the case went against the defendant, he would have grounds for a retrial on the basis of ineffective counsel because this is the first day he got caught being drunk. But was that the first time he was drunk? So I would think that uh, the client would automatically, uh, the defendant would automatically, if he lost, uh, go for an appeal and probably get it. So that's why I think she uh, declared a mistrial. And I believe I saw somewhere else where this gentleman actually did uh, lose his case and uh, he wasn't sentenced to life, but he was. He had a very, very long sentence. I looked for it for a while, and I could not find it again. Um, his name is uh, Dale Jacachunas, D-A-L-E-J-A-K-U-C-H-U-N-A-S. If anyone can find out what was the ultimate um, factor in his retrial or the decision in his retrial, put it in the comment section. Now, let's get to the heavy stuff. Mr. Karamenko did end up going in front of the bar, but what happened there was that they temporarily um, took him off the bar. He couldn't practice law, but it was more of a compassionate thing so he could get help. It really wasn't a punishment. But he is no stranger to scandal. Judge lays into Tabish's attorney. District Judge Joseph Bonaventure chastised Rick Tabish's local attorney Wednesday, saying the lawyers win at all costs strategy and unsavory ethics are typical of reasons that people do not like lawyers. Bonaventure, who has a reputation for yelling when he gets angry in court, appeared to be trying very hard to keep his cool as he read a prepared statement about a letter attorney Joseph Caramango wrote to Tabish's brother, Greg. The letter was introduced as part of Tabish's former lead attorney, J. Tony Serra, motion to withdraw from the case. Bonaventure granted Serra's motion on Wednesday. In the letter, Karamenko tells Tabish's brother, we need to go on the offensive by filing several pre-sentencing motions. He explains they should hire Bruce Cutler, a lawyer who won three cases for East Coast mob boss John Gotti. He goes on to say, there is no stronger person to advocate these motions and argue them before Bonaventure than Bruce Cutler. Even 
if he breaks into an all-out screaming match between Bruce and Bonaventure. This will benefit us in that Bonaventure will be pressured into making statements on the record which can be used against him in an immediate appeal and the denial of the motions to the Supreme Court of Nevada, Caramingo wrote. Caramingo also wrote that he believes the Nevada Supreme Court holds Bonaventure in low regard and the state's highest court would not hesitate to reverse any ruling he makes on our motions. So what happened here is this Rick Tabish must be a big deal because he had a OJS lawyer team with several different lawyers on it. Now, the Sierra gentleman was the head lawyer, but um, Mr. Karaminko was also on that team. He wrote a letter to Tabish's brother, who must be some kind of big shot, because they wanted to get Bruce Cutler, the man on the left there, Bruce Cutler was John Gotti's lawyer. And when I say he was John Gotti's lawyer, John Gotti refused to go to trial without him. In fact, he got the name the Teflon Don by having Bruce Cutler as his lawyer. In fact, when he ultimately lost in his federal case, the judge threw Bruce Cutler off the case and John Gotti was extremely upset. Um, it was because he was too close to the gangsters and he was hanging out with the gangsters and the judge felt like he uh, was becoming one of the gangsters. So she thought it, saw that as a conflict of interest and would not let him um, represent uh, Mr. Gotti. And Mr. Gotti, we all know, got uh, arrested. Now, watch this. Now listen to this headline and tell me it's not incredible. That's Michelle Levitt on the right there. Daughters of police, judges, lured into prostitution. Now, we're going to do another to be continued because this has to be dealt with all on its own because it's such um, an unbelievable case. There's a pimp out there that's going after the, the uh, daughters of police officers, lawyers, judges. Uh, he's going after the bigwigs daughters and um well i'll show you what happened and why it was a conflict of interest and a big big problem for judge levitt my name is Sorty product news wishing you and yours a very safe and happy rest of the work week good night